Notice how the shaft kind of points in a specific direction. Well, I believe that direction is north. So I'm going to flip this around to the opposite direction, and it should point south now. Let me take a second here. All right, so the wind direction isn't really working right now. What about the wind speed? Okay, that's something. Wind speed's working properly. All right, now in this portion of the video, I'm going to attempt to replace the potentiometer. I did purchase a replacement potentiometer, but uh, my goal of this portion of the video is to entertain my usual audience, but also help others that have uh, the same model wind vane as I do. So this style right here, if you take a look at this portion of the wind vane, this is the older style. Now on the new styles, I believe they have a little bit of a flare. And also I believe on the wind vane itself has a brass tip. So this is an older style. Now these potentiometers technically are not replaceable. I think on the new ones they are designed to be replaced. However, after doing some extensive research and translating articles in German and Russian, I have found what I believe to be a readily available replacement potentiometer, and that should fix our wind direction issue. The wind cups have been working fine. There's actually a reed switch inside this housing, and I have tested this out with my voltage tester. On the old potentiometer, there are four soldering points. On the new potentiometer, there are only three soldering points. Don't worry about this. I'm going to explain everything and we're not going to have a problem. But anyway, this potentiometer sits down in this little cavity right here. And then above that potentiometer is this little plastic puck. Sorry, let me get the camera in focus here because this is a uh, good information if you have this system. So there's this little plastic puck and you are going to have to remove this out of here, but before you remove that out of there, there is a little washer and nut, which that threads onto the potentiometer after this little puck. But this puck, let's talk about this puck. So this puck is pretty much welded, or well glued into this cavity rather, something like this. You know, it's down in there maybe a half inch. So the way I got it out of here, First, I took a straight pick and I started digging at the sides to try and remove some of the glue. And then I believe I took this back pick and there's a little hole right here and I just dug this down in here. I was able to get enough leverage to pull this up out of here. And at that point, to get the potentiometer out of this cavity, because it's a very tight fit, vice grips. Uh, I grabbed onto the head of this with vice grips and that was good and bad because it allowed me to pull it out of here but that last little jolt, that's when I pulled the potentiometer apart from all the other wiring. See that little bit of air tube in there? Put it in there a little bit. I guess we'll try the channel locks again, right? Might as well. Oh, that came right out. Easy peasy, that's the way to do it. Now that we have that air hose removed, we can slide these wires up through the shaft a little bit, therefore giving us better access to everything. And also, I'm gonna reinsert these wires back into this T, and I want it to go up through the cavity where the potentiometer will sit, which is in the top right here. Again, the black and the red wire go to that reed switch for the wind cups. Alright, perfect. Alright, now that we have that wire fished through here, I'm going to start off with a clean slate. I'm just going to cut all these wires evenly back a little bit. So when I pulled those, I don't know if I pulled out any copper strands. Turn down this automatic wire stripper and we'll peel back some of the jacket here. I don't know, maybe two inches. Make it a little bit stronger. Beautiful. Pull off this jacket. 
Now we need to strip back these wires a little bit. My wire stripper is too large for these very fine wires. It's a devil's errand to use the automatic wire strippers at this point, so used to work with the mechanic Charlie. He told me this one. Get yourself a little uh, butane torch and burn a little bit of the wire jacket, and then you should be able to take your fingers and peel it off. All right, I drew my own wiring schematic and I believe this to be correct. We will certainly find out. So here is the main black wire, the black wire we just stripped these four wires off of. Now there are four wires. There's a yellow, green, red, and black. So let's start with the red. The red is the common. So that's gonna go to terminal number one on the back of this potentiometer. You're not going to be able to see it on camera, but number one is right here. But that red wire is also going to connect to the red line on the reed switch, which is the red line right here, right? Because there's a red and black wire for that uh, wind speed cup reed switch. Now the black wire on the controller side is the measured pulse for the wind speed reed switch sensor. So that black wire from the reed switch, this guy right here, this black guy is going to just get connected to the other black wire, and that'll be the end of that. On the previous motor, I believe there was an extra terminal just for that black junction, that black wire junction, but we're just going to connect those two together. Um, yes, so on this old reed switch, there's actually a non-labeled terminal right here, and I believe that was just for a junction point for the black to black wire connection. No matter, we're just gonna connect those two and be done with it. Then we also have the green wire from the console and that's gonna go directly to terminal number two on the potentiometer. Not sure what the green one is for, but then we have the yellow wire, which that is for direction. That's gonna go to terminal number three, also labeled as CW on this potentiometer. So I'm gonna get everything wired up off camera, get it all soldered up. No need to waste your time there. I think this is really the important information there. Let me try and give you a close up of the back of this potentiometer. Let me turn down the light a little bit. There, I think that's a little bit better. Hopefully that proves to be helpful. All right, I have the new potentiometer wired in. I must say I'm not the best at soldering ultra small components, but here's the real test. I'm gonna spin this potentiometer and I want you to look at the wind direction. All right, time for the real test and it's already looking good because the current direction is south. If you have a faulty potentiometer, I'm pretty sure that it will point nowhere but north. So I'm gonna rotate this shaft 180 degrees and we'll see what happens. That's about 180 degrees, look at that, right back to north. Let's do 180 degrees again. Right back to south. Let's do a quarter turn. East, 180 degree turn. Should be about west. Guess I went a little too far there. But the proof is in the pudding. Looks like everything's functioning properly. So what I need to do next is the soldered connections I just completed. I need to cover that up with hot glue to protect everything here. And then we will shove this assembly carefully back into the shaft here while we're pulling the tail out. And we're gonna start reassembling everything. This is exciting. All right, now I'm gonna start reinserting the reed switch as well as this wiring assembly back into this junction point. So I'm gonna pull the wire through a little bit and I'm 
very carefully going to tuck the red and black loose wires that go to the reed switch down into this cavity. I can see that there's a little seat right about here where this uh, reed switch, or no, excuse me, this potentiometer looks like it's supposed to sit. So, it's a very tight fit. Anyway, let's take a socket, pull the wire out a little bit, try and push that in. And uh, I think that's about seated. That's that's seated. Felt it hit the backstop. All right, now it's time to press this ring down. Now the scratched up side where I was picking at it with my pick is going to face up and the cleaner side is going to face down. So this is uh, probably going to make a bit of a mess, but I have some, what's going on camera? I have uh, just some clear silicone. I guess I'm going to butter out the edge of this and just slide it down. Kind of hard to do this without getting this stuff everywhere. I need to be careful it doesn't really come in contact with the potentiometer shafts. Use my socket. Press it down. That went pretty smooth. I think that did the trick. I'm going to change out my gloves and just wipe off that shaft to ensure I didn't get anything on there. Now, I'm not sure if we should let that cure or tighten up this nut and washer. Probably best to let it cure, but really need to finish this project tonight, so we're just going to proceed forward. So. That seems pretty tight. I think we'll leave it there. Now on the underside, I need to reinstall the cowling for the wind cup. Um, just trying to make sure that that's not going to interfere with the set screw. I don't think it will. Should we put a little bit of silicone back on there? Wouldn't be a bad idea. Ugh decisions. And the flare is going to face away from the T. Give this a little rotational force. Push. Oh, that's tight. Fit. There she goes. Popped right in. And wipe this off with a paper towel. Clean up any silicone residue. Alright, now I'm going to take my T4 and tighten up this set screw. It's hidden right beneath the cowling here. Give it a test. So that's pretty darn good. So now really it's just a matter of reassembly. So before I install the top weather vane, I want to get the shaft reinstalled. So we'll carefully feed this wire back through the shaft, get it lined up. Yep, that'll do it. Now I'm going to reinstall this little piece of wedge tubing at the end of the shaft just to help lock the wire in place. Now we can reattach that shaft to this mount and there is a through bolt that goes through here and there's also a little slot right here for that wire to sneak into.
All right, and the final thing we have to do is calibrate the potentiometer in an orderly direction. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at our monitor and we want the potentiometer to turn until the wind direction indicates north. Okay, so now that the wind direction indicates north, what we're going to do, we're going to line up this shaft, we're going to take our weather vane and point it in the direction that the shaft is, we're simply going to slide this straight down over the potentiometer. And now this weather vane, when we go to install it, we need to ensure that the shaft points north. So the final thing we have to do is tighten up the little set screw on this weather vane. So it's the following morning and I've been doing some work to the potentiometer here. I raised the weather or the wind vane slightly higher on the potentiometer shaft and it is spinning a bit more freely. I'm hoping that this will loosen up over time but I will say it's not as sensitive to wind direction as the Davis potentiometer was. And this component the original Davis potentiometer for this style weather vane is impossible to find. They don't make these, so this is the best you're going to get without completely replacing the whole assembly here. But just to show you, like if I blow on this, I mean it works. If I blow kind of lightly, I mean, it eventually gets to the right direction, but it's not as sensitive as I hoped it would be. But for $40, it's a lot better than spending upwards of $200, $250 on completely replacing this whole assembly. So I'm satisfied with the results. In the next video, I'm gonna mount this, I believe on top of the shed, so stay tuned for that video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Again, hopefully this wiring schematic was helpful to any of you out there that had the same weather station as I do. Thank you for watching as always. I will catch you on the next one.